We thank you for a time of worship and praise. We thank you because your praise abound in our gates. We thank you, precious Jesus. Oh Lord, this hymn is a summary of your word, a Christian home. That we ask that you help us. As the word is sent forth today, Father, let it revive every broken homes let it resuscitate every heart that is asleep let it touch and awake mothers fathers that you have called into your purpose help us oh lord for in jesus name i pray amen Good morning, church. Um, we're having a Valentine's Sunday today. Am I seeing love in the hair? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Today we'll be talking about the mark called love. The mark called love. Uh, today, love is something that it's quite easy for people to profess. I love you. I love you. I love you, Sister Anifemi. <laughs> uh, it's so sweet to say I love you. <clears throat> but do we really love? Um, between a husband and a wife, the mau own is a battlefield. And yet we say, I love you. I love you, babe. I love you. I love you. I love you, princess. So, um, sometimes I get tired of that word. Like, when I hear it's being said, and some, I have some people who hand the call with, I love you. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I tell people, if you love me, show it. No, you don't have to tell me. I want to see the love. Amen. So, today we are going into the mark called love. Now, the theme is pursuing God's purpose for your marriage. Pursuing God's purpose for your marriage. It takes me to the test, Ephesians 5, 14 to 31. But we already read it uh, from uh, verse 1. So we'll start from 13. And uh, we'll be reading Malachi 2, 13 to 16. 1 Peter 3, 7. God's purpose for marriage. A lot of times, I, when it comes to topics like this, I like to do one-on-one -on -one rather than coming on the pulpit to teach it. But this particular message, the Lord wants us to teach it. Uh, because the world today prefers to hear lies. We, we really do not want to hear the truth. And we cannot embrace the truth. Amen. So this message is for married and singles. If you're preparing your mind to meet or to be met by Brother Purpose and to meet Sister Purpose, <laughs> this message is for you. You need to prepare your mind to what is that purpose of God for marriage. Amen. Um, for our readers, if we will be reading Malachi... Two, please, I would want AMPC, AMPC version, please. And then um, for five, Ephesians 5, when it's time for me to start from 23, please, I would want message version. I would want message. Uh, there we go. Uh, so... Are we all together? I want to see smiling faces. If you are not reading Bible on your phone, I would want us to look up. <laughs> Please, look up. <laughs> Welcome to church again. <laughs> yeah, I really want us to be in this message. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, verse um, 13. I'll read from here. Um, 
It says, Wherefore, he said, Awake, thou that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This short scripture I just read now is very loaded and powerful. It's a whole message on its own. Wherefore, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Many of us know the time that we live in today when it comes to marriages, homes, Christian homes. Say so God made us male and female. But today we have male and male, female and female, being joined together in the church of God. Sin has causes a lot of problems in marriages. These are foundation tips to the message. So just despite the fact that Christ came to give us salvation, we still continue to wallow in the depths of that sinful lifestyle. So that awake. Mothers awake. Fathers awake. Why did God make us one? It is a mystery. Christ the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is three in one. God is bringing himself, his governance, his mode of operation in existence in marriages. And yet we know it not. We embrace false teachings, satanic messages that says, well, we all have problems. You have to learn to deal with it. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Your home is the house of God. Your marriage between you, husband and wife, belongs to God. If you're in Malachi 2, 13 to 16, it's time for you to read for me. It said, walking by faith helps you to journey faithfully in your homes. And how do you pursue, how do we pursue the purpose of God for our homes? Many husbands have lost faith in their wives. Many wives have lost faith in their husband. Even without faith, you cannot walk with God. The Bible talks about the children of Israel being cut off from the tree. He said, it now said to us Gentiles, he said, those that are unbelieved, that are now being grafted in, should not be haughty at heart because some were cut off because of unbelief, lack of faith. Are we all together? In homes, there's no faith. You don't trust your wife, you don't trust your husband, you question everything he says. The husband is like, oh, I have a bank account, my wife must not know about it. And they're so proud of it. Like, the abnormal is normal and nobody is doing nothing about it. And you see people build, even the mothers will be telling the daughter, my dear, you are going to your husband's house. Let me just tell you the truth. You have to build a life for yourself. Don't Men, <clears throat> they cannot be trusted. That is the evil we plant in our daughters. I don't plant that in my kids. You tell them, I have a friend who affirmatively told me that her mom said, you give birth to yourself. He said, you're giving birth for a man. You have to take care of your children. You have to live for yourself. Hey, error. And we are so, we see it as godly cancels. Everyone is now living like, watch your head, watch your shoulder, watch your ankle, watch your this, watch your that. We all are careful. We are so careful. The wife would like want to communicate. You'll be like, I don't want him to know what I'm talking about. I don't want her to hear what I'm talking about. We've lost trust and faith in ourselves. Couples are strangers. Many are living with their enemies. 
you have a wife, she is your enemy. I told, I told someone yesterday, I said, that woman will kill that man. When I heard that story, I said, you are married to your own enemy. It's a very intricate matter. And I try to be, when, when the Lord gave this message, I'm like, now it's time to preach it. Because when people come and I'm privileged to uh, counsel couples, I'm like, I look at the case. It's quite holistic. I don't, I don't judge A with the lifestyle of a family. I listen to them. I listen to the foundation, how they started, how they built it. And most times I say to myself, I said, many are married to their enemies. They are not even in love. Many couples are married to their enemies. The danger that we are today. Said so the days are evil. And we bring the evil. We brought it right into our homes. The e it's, it's, it's enough evil out there. Now bringing it to your home is disastrous. Calamity. Abound. Keep abounding. In your own home. That should be a, a, a place of peace. A place of joy. A place of love. Um, Sister uh, Olamdi, are you reading Bible? Help me open um, Malachi 2. AMPC. Thank you, Ma. Yeah. I too. No, not yet, Ma. I just want her to open it down for me and keep looking at it on her phone. Uh, Say, so take it to yourself. Take it that you don't break faith in your marriage. When you start becoming hopeless in your partner, your own breaks. Many are, they are like roommates. They live in the house. It's only when they want to come together as husband and wife that you see them start laughing. Hey babe, how are you doing? Oh my God, look at your hair. Uh, and women, a lot of our mothers, they know that style. I won't lie to you. They know that style. They know when daddy is coming around and it's extra nice. Daddy wants something. And the same thing, when mommy is coming around, like, ah, oh, don't worry me, my husband. <laughs> mommy wants something. It's now transactional. You are nice to get something. You put up the fake life to get something from your partner. And your kids now watch that. They now feel like that's how life should be. We now raise consciously, unconsciously, we have raised kids that are very transactional in nature. When they come to you, they'll be like, hey mom, how are you doing? I told my son one time when he came to my room, my mom, how are you? How are you? I said, don't come and ask me how I'm me because you want something. If this is the mindset you want to carry, I bind, I prayed for him that and I said, you tell me what you want, but you have to ask me how am I every day without even needing anything. And then when he's asking, we say, my mom, how are you? I just want to see how you're doing. I say, oh, my head hurts. Oh, uh, two, three Sunday, uh, three some days ago, I told him, I said, I'm having a very bad headache. He said, I'm on my way home now. So you raise kids with the consciousness of life and love. It's not life is not transactional. We have to stop it. It's so evil. And we now it's in the home. I, I don't want this thing bullying now. It was by faith that Sarah conceived. She had faith in her husband. Imagine, very old man. She walked by faith. Even after she died, the man still had six babies afterwards. Do we understand? Are we getting it? Where you think that is the end, you no longer trust that man. Another woman will revive strength out of him. Would revive faith, trust out of him. And they will be more productive. And signs of losing trust and faith is when you start to take decisions that exclude them, it shows that they are no longer useful in your life. So why are you married? I tell people, I said, I believe strongly in a marriage that it's transparent. Open. Openness. Like you can see through the man's heart and the man can see through your heart. He can actually sleep and say, oh, this is what my wife is doing. That is a godly home. Amen. We are in a time that the days are evil and it's affecting marriages. In order to achieve the purpose of God as couples, you need to know that the days are evil. 
come to that knowledge first. Understand that the days you are here, they are evil. That man is facing a lot of evil out there. You as a woman, you have so much to deal with. You have to support yourself. Praise God. Now the devil is focused on Christian homes. He knows the strongest thing to crumble. The strongest thing to crumble is Christian homes. Just one couple is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. One couple, neatly united, strong in the Lord, is a threat, big threat to, to the devil. And he will do everything within his power to crush them, to break them apart. Having that understanding alone will put you on a hedge of prayer and intentionality to fight, to protect, to nurture your marriage. He knows that if the home is in strong agreement as a body of Christ, the church would be a glorious place. Now let's look at it. Now we'll be going to Malachi very soon. The home, if they are in strong agreement now, as a body of Christ, many body of Christ are not in strong agreement. Many churches are not united. Now, imagine the body of Christ as it is. The Bible says the head, the hand, the shoulder, all of us, we are all parts of the body. Now, the parts now working together as Brother Evans' body is working together. If a marriage is like that, functionally active like that, that the home will be a glorious place to be. It will be a fantastic place to be. There is no problem in church, but that wish that starts from your home. We need to understand this. There is no problem in church, but that wish that starts from your home. I can give you lots of examples of that. Personally, my own personal experience. There are days that I'm done crying at home. I've cried very well. And I get to church. I'm looking sad. They don't even understand what is going on. I won't even know a brother passed me by. Or a sister says, Sister Shola, good morning. I won't even know. And then the next thing I will hear is, Pastor will call me. Ah, brother, this reported you that they greet you. Didn't I say, ah, when? I didn't even know he passed. And some people will not even report. They will just bottle it in. And then, before you know it, the body of Christ is divided. Even the person will be preaching. They go like, this one that they will greet, I will not respond. It's not coming to preach to us. All that ill mannerless, I mean, ill mannered behavior, hate, will start causing the vision in the body of Christ, which injures us as a whole. If there is no problem in church, then there is no problem from home. When you see happy couples, pretend, if you forget pretenders, you know pretenders if you have the fruit of the Spirit, if you can discern. But when you see happy couples, you will know they are happy. When you see believers that are serving the Lord together, you will see them, you will glorify God through their life. Even when you go to their house, you will know this is a godly family. You will see it, the aroma of life coming from their family. We're going slowly. Um, if the church is weak, the family is weak. The weakness of a church affects the family. So also the weakness of the family affects the church. I want us to understand one thing. The church, the first church is your family. We need not to forget that. I told the pastor who told me that I was trying to bring, like preach for him and his wife to come back. He said the woman said, if you want to be, if she wants to come back to him, he has to stop being a pastor. And he was so angry. Hey, I said, sir, with all due respect, sir, and all your time in ministry, you should know that the first ministry is your marriage. 
If that woman does not recognize you as a pastor, I will tell you to go back home and drop your pastoral certificate and cry to God to revive you. Your wife must attest to your calling. If she cannot testify to your calling, there is a problem. You call yourself a minister of God as a woman and your husband will look at you. Ah, ah, how I wish my wife can treat me the way she's treating this brother Evans in the church. Ah, ah, is there anything brother Evans does that I haven't done as a husband? There is a problem with your ministry. And that is why Christianity is about your life. It's not about whatever thing you think you become in the church. Your life. I told him, by the time we were done talking, he said one thing, he said, oh wow, you are truly a woman of God. I said, I'm not a woman of God, I'm only Shola. Sir, go back to your wife. I told him, I said, at what age? There's no anyone out there. This woman knows you from when you were little. You married her when you were youth. Even if she tells you, Daddy, let's go to, uh, I think you should minister. Ah, no, I don't let me minister. The one in the house is enough. It will get to a point, she will be the one begging you to take up your pastoral mantle again. Amen. I said, the news of divorce and separation to the public makes the devil happy. And it's, it's like food now. It's like lollipop. Irreconcilable differences. I call it satanic language from the pit of hell. There is nothing like irreconcilable. I say this when I do one-on-one. -on -one. I've had families that they've gone really apart. Here in Canada. And the Lord, right here in another province, the Lord revived the home. If you know what God has called you into, every deadness will come back to life. You only need to tell them the truth. There is nothing irreconcilable. I listen to A, I listen to B, and I go like, Papa, if you want to shout, just, just call me and shout. The man will call me 3 a.m. and he will start shouting. Me, I will be shaking. And now imagine if he's doing all this shouting on his wife. And when he's done shouting, he will now say, thank you, sister, for listening to me. We did that for like two months. Before I knew, they came back together. The home was real. I'm just giving us tips. I'm not really in the message yet. Tips of like what the devil has given us and we have, we have embraced it as a life. And we say we are in love. No, there's not necessarily like love. There's nothing like irreconcilable differences. Please write it down. Don't join them to say it. There's nothing irreconcilable as a child of God. Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. There's nothing irreconcilable under the earth if you are a Christian. As a woman, you have to be broken. Broken. The sacredness of the home has been undermined. Now let's go to Malachi 2. Thank you. Malachi 2, please. Slowly. We'll be reading that scripture slowly. Please, I want everybody to open their Bible to Malachi 2. Slowly, please. And this you do. Slowly, Mama. Now, slowly. Read it clearly and slowly. Are we all there? If you're all there, let's shout hallelujah. 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 Who are the people going out? Oh, okay. Don't be too long, sir. This part is very important. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We'll not be distracted in Jesus' name. Ah. Malachi 2. If we are there, let's raise, let's raise our hands up. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that you are not there. Put the baby on your leg and open Malachi too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Are we there? Oh, <laughs> you're coming. So we'll be reading Malachi 2, um, NLT, not AMPC. 
Yeah, efficiency is NPC, NLT, please. Yeah. Okay, are we together, Sister Frances? It's out of order there. <laughs> okay, now you can read, ma. Yeah, it's another thing you do. Yeah, it's another thing you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears. Okay. Weeping and groaning because he pays no attention to your offering mm -hmm. and doesn't doesn't accept them with pleasure. Mm -hmm. You cry out. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vow you and your wife made when Hold you on. were young. Hold on. A pastor now just finished insulting his wife at home. These are the things we see in the church. Yelling at mommy, calling mommy in different names, and then come to church. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord bless you. And God is not hearing. And people come, Pastor, pray for us, our life. And that is declaring, Leka, Baba, Olu, Agosin, Kakan. There's nothing. You're wasting your time. Now, it affects the church. Are we understanding the link? It affects the gathering of the, of the brethren. Now, read on, man. But you have, you have been unfaithful to her. The Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made. Many a times when you go to, when you do church wedding and they tell you, oh, in drink sickness, in sorrow and sadness, in go, 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 all of that, you say, <laughs> the butterfly is still rolling. And when it is reality of the in, in sorrow, in sadness, in joy, and in kiniko, you become hostile, unloving, terrible people to one another. Now, say, the Lord witnessed it. There is a man that witnessed that oath. He stands in between it. And he knows when you decree those words to your wife. This section is for the men. I'm coming to the women. To your wife. And when we talk about a man, God created heaven and earth. He created everything. He now created almighty man. Almighty man. He said he put him in the garden. To, and he said he gave him to have dominion. He had dominion over all that he has created. Do you know what it means? That God created all things and put man to have dominion. And now, man now had fellowship with God. He was not in isolation of divine presence. He has God. He has everything. Now, I want us to listen, please, to our brothers in the house, our daddies, our uncles, brother purpose, looking for sister purpose. I want you to listen. Oluwafemi, listen. God created everything. Man has been equipped. To do great things. He had been equipped. To fly. Now, the most amazing thing is, he had God. Bible says God comes at the cool of the evening to fellowship. What more thing do you want to have than having God? And yet, God look at man and say, Ay, brother Emmanuel, it is not good for you not to have a wife. Hey, it is a mystery. They have sister Docas, you are not my sister. I am married to Jesus. Live from the pit of hell. Shut up. <laughs> now, if this is serious. These are things that we have to pray against. You see a brother, able brother, marriageable brother saying, Hey, man, marriage. Ah. There is a showing that you have to be shown that will not be shown until you are married. There is a revelation of you that men will not see until you are married. There is a life of glory yet to be seen. It doesn't matter what relationship you had with God. It is that woman that will bring it out. A presence in your life fill, complete the puzzle. When one piece is missing from it, you are not complete. I want us to understand this. It is a mystery. Woe unto the man that comes and say, Brother, you don't have to be married. The soul marry. Did Jesus marry? 
If you desire marriage, please go ahead. Some had given themselves completely to the Lord. They know what God has called them. Most of them don't even live long, like forever, forever. But there are people, you know it's yourself. The way the flesh is, is battering you. Ha! So to avoid fornication, if you don't, if you cannot contain, marry your to get along. Do not let anyone lie to you. Do not let anyone deceive you. As a woman, you have to marry. As a man, you have to marry. I really want to emphasize so we understand how important marriage is. The most beautiful union created by God for God. It is created by him for him to manifest his ways, his doing here on earth. Praise God. Let's read that scripture. Let's continue. Now it says, God witness. God witness that vow you make. Are we all together? Yeah. Praise God. Let's wave our hands in the air if we are here. Hallelujah. Yeah. He witnessed it. He's there. He heard when you told her, I will always be by you, baby. Ha. Come rain, come sunshine. Even when you're very terrible, I will be here loving you. And here you are saying, you knock too much. You, I don't like your attitude. I can't, contr- I can't just deal with you. You cry. Say, because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young. But you have been unfaithful to her. Read on, ma. Though she remained your faithful partner. Though she remained your faithful partner. The wife of your marriage vows. The wife of your marriage vows. Didn't the Lord make you one Hold with on, your mama. wife? Hold on, mama. The wife of your marriage vows. Let us examine this word love before we say it. Men, I'm calling on us. It's okay to have, have it all wrong from the beginning. Hey, this is the time to look inward and walk towards change. The Lord witnessed that time, that moment. You gave her those promises. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? Isn't God that made you one with her? In body and spirit, you are his. In body and spirit, you are his. Yes, ma'am. And what does he want? What does the Lord want? Godly children from your union. Godly children from your union. So guide your heart. Mm-hmm. Remain loyal to the wife of your lo- youth. For her hate. Ah, hold on. Most. Mr. Ademola, can you please explain loya- loyalty? Can you, can you have the mic? Thank you. What it means to be loyal to your wife. The word loyal to, to be loyal means to, to give it all, I mean, without uh, holding anything back. That's my understanding of being loyal. Loyal. Pass it on to Mr. Oriofe. They are the married men. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand English. <laughs> Come on, take the mic, sir. Give him the mic. I'm serious. It's going around the men. I want them to, want to teach us what it means to be loyal. Please. I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> Story of her, don't be like this. <laughs> Please, okay, next. <laughs> to be honest and dedicated to your wife. Honest and dedicated, Brother Evans. The mic is right behind you. Yeah. We're coming back to our sisters. It's, it's a, that, that's why we skip the prayer section because I really want us to understand this life. Yes, Papa. Being honest with your partner for a long period of time. Is there an expired time? No, for a long period of time. Forever. Okay, forever. <laughs> <You're deaf. laughs> Amen. Pass it on to Brother Emmanuel. Thank you. <laughs> what does being loyal mean to you, sir? You're a married man, too. We have a lot of married men in the house. <laughs> I've even forgotten. I've <laughs> Okay. To endure and sacrifice. Say so, so guard your heart. Remain loyal to you, to the wife of your youth. To endure and to sacrifice. Mr. Moses, you have a mic before you. 
She's married too. My brother said the minister, but my your totality. Giving your totality. God bless you, sir. Continue, ma. For I, for I hate divorce. The Lord says, says, For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the, Lord, the, the God, God of, Israel. of Israel. For I hate divorce, says the Lord. Continue, ma. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty. Again. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty. So with this statement, who has the power for divorce? Huh? From this scripture, who has the who is God addressing here for the first for the husband? Okay, now to divorce a woman who has the power to call for divorce. The man. Are we are we are we undermining the power God has given man? Someone that God created everything and gave him charge. Hey, you are loaded. You are like you are powerful as a man. You already have the presence of God before the woman even came. You are enabled. You have the power to say no to divorce. And you have the power to say yes to divorce. What is a woman? Women are tantrum chores. You want to frustrate them, they will bring it ten times. You give them span, they give you a child. Anything you throw at them, at them is what they give back to you. And that's why we have to teach godly ways of living as a woman. We're going there. But in the generic form of the make of a woman, until you encounter Jesus, until you are broken, before a woman can align with the purpose of God for her husband. Until then... You must be the Jesus, the priest in that home. I pray that the Lord will illuminate our hearts to understand the deep things of the scripture of the kingdom of God. So to divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty. Now I want to tell us something. We may grieve. When you see a woman grieve, Acrimony is, is a perfect example of a grieving woman. She will, she will go any length to pour that cruelty on that man. We need to understand that we cannot isolate our life from the Bible. No! The word itself is created by that word. And we are existing because of that word. In which our totality it is molded in that word. You cannot be perfect more than the Bible. And you cannot live outside of the negativity of it. When cruelty is passed on a woman, she is overwhelmed. She is overwhelmed. As a man, I'm challenging you to understand this. And the moment you say, I'm going to leave this marriage, you've not even brought divorce to the table. Problem has started right from there. She lost trust. She no longer trusts what you, you're capable of doing. In fact, at that moment, a woman, she's thinking 1,001 things. Wow, maybe there's another woman. Wow, maybe, maybe, maybe. All this may be now. She will now start her own planning. Wall of defense. Uh -uh. Now make your own marriage by your own self a battlefield. I always tell people, we only know the beginning of war. We do not know the ending of it. So if you stir up a fire, the house will burn down. I pray that the Lord will speak peace and ease into our homes in the name of Jesus. He said, to divorce her is to overwhelm her with cruelty. Says the Lord of heaven's army. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. 
So unfaithfulness is not just cheating, as we all target. So we say a man is unfaithful. Wow, he's already cheating. No. I just gave an example, telling her I'm going to leave this marriage. You say, someone will say, I just want to say it to make her angry. Why do you have to say things to make your wife angry? Are you a witch? Or you're a wizard? Why? Why do you want to see her angry? Your matrimony can jeopardize the body of Christ. As we read in this scripture. Said, if we say, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? Said, I will tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vow. What, what has the vow between Brother Emmanuel and my sister in Ghana has to do with Bethel Chapel? What the, the vow they went to go and make in Ghana, how does it concern us? Are we understanding the, these mysteries? Because it's a body of Christ. We are together. Now, my prayer now will be hindered now because one brother is doing nonsense to his wife. Ha! That marriage must work. The home must be settled because we want to experience God. We don't want God to be deaf to our prayers. This is the Bible. It's not my writing. It says your private disagreement is not private. As long as you belong to a body of Christ, anything you do in the private is no longer private. It is, it's a public business. I was telling someone, I said, me, I don't have secrets. As a child of God, representative of Jesus, you are no longer responsible. You are no longer living for yourself. You have to, you are like others must know your affairs. Apostle Paul said it to the church. He said, he said Timothy will tell you our affairs, our life, how we live. There's nothing eating. There's nothing that can be eaten. So Satan knows these mysteries. He has invested so much in causing marital problems and issues. So much investment. He, I will listen to some people talk. The English is so sweet. And they are dishing evil on people. And you will not read the comment and say, Jesus Christ. Homes are breaking. From wrong teachings. Well articulated English. Being used to destroy lives. He has raised agents, people that has willfully yielded to be satanic weapon to destroy homes. A brother will call brother, another brother, and say, ah, my wife, last night she didn't give me food to eat. I just don't know how to deal with this woman. Oh, brother. <laughs> All the same time, children. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me, I don't even worry about her. I take care of myself. I will not let any woman keep. Like, you hear this counsel, you'll be like, what's going on here? We no longer point ourselves to Golgotha. We no longer point ourselves to the cross. We give wrong counsel, evil advice. The Lord will ask you, He would ask me what you utter from your mouth to destroy other people's life. We must rise to live above the evil of the world said understanding the time we it because the days are evil christians must rise above them no matter what you say to yourself me and my family we are not a partaker of this evil my home will not break my husband will not become another man's another woman's husband my wife will not become another ah, ah. how can you pick a beautiful tiny girl i saw frances picture when she got married she's not a tiny, tiny like that after nurturing her so much and then the devil will now come and say claim who we will burn the devil by fire from where may we not labor for another to eat it's a serious problem serious cancer like serious problem today even pastors will tell say, brother sister if it's not working it's okay it's not working no need there's nothing we can do i mean it's better for you people to be alive than to kill yourself what happened to your discipleship You let people understand what it takes. I mean, it's the word of God. Let's preach it. It doesn't harm to preach the word as ministers, as teachers of the word when you go out there. Let people know the truth that is in the word of God that can save them and save their generations unborn. Men fornicate within the church from a lady to another. 
Like I said, this section is for men. So let's have fun. It's everywhere. It's easy. It's, even a, it's an easy tax. If they don't want to fornicate, the sister will like the brother. I'm crushing on that brother. So cute. Oh, Mwali. And it's, these are languages, these are words that we hear. And it's so, it was uh, with confidence, so. And I'm like, whoa. We were having an uh, open, open a hang out with Jesus. We'll be having this year too, last year. And one brother rose up and said, let's call a spade a spade. It is not easy. Uh, are we? He said, wow. The confidence is the thing for me. I even like it. I'm like, oh, wow. It's, uh, how much evil. You preach, do not fornicate to this brother. They will come stopping, talking to you. They will go to another pastor that will say, well, it's okay. She be you will marry her. Eh, it's fine. You still push it. If I ask them, what did that pastor tell you? They say, eh, they said it's okay. As long as they are married. They say, whoa. The Lord will ask us. Would have, we all are accountable to every word we say to people. Advice, counsels that you give. The number of homes we break. We will account. No matter how angry a man is, no matter how angry a woman is, when they have surrounded by godly people, godliness, the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. You can look, you can, you can break their walls down with your kindness, with your kind word, with your godly counsel, the word of God. It's a perilous time. Father committing sin against daughter. Mothers are scared to leave their children. Everyone is careful, even in the church. You can't trust to leave your daughter, your sons, with them. You are always scared. We are always checking ourselves. Because it's, the days are evil. Evil has eaten deep into the lives of many marriages. The boldness in sexual perversion is too high and all manner of sinfulness. We need to behold the purpose of God for marriage beyond the pleasures that is in marriage. Actually, marriage is more beautiful when it is in alignment with God. It's, it's, it's the most beautiful place to be. How deep a revelation the Lord has shown me about godly marriage. Ha! I tell people, I said, I know what I want. I know what God has prepared. It's a godly, it's a, it's, it's a peaceful place to be. The same life you have from the church goes everywhere. In all your conversations. The Bible says, let your moderation be made known to all men. You are involving Holy Spirit to inhabit every details of your marriage. The Bible says, I will send you the comforter. We've taught it before. He said, He will teach you all things. You are involving Christ to take charge of every details of your marriage. Abraham told Sarah, Go, follow the king. She didn't argue. There was no way written in the Bible that she argued. And first Peter says, daughters of whom we are. I'm coming to the late sisters. But as men, involving God. In, if Abraham involved God, he would not sell his wife out, actually. And Holy Spirit, I mean, the Bible recalls that after that, God says that, walk thou before me and be perfect. And if, if there's an imperfection in man, if you are not careful, you will be cut off. Imagine you singing. And your wife coerces from the kitchen. Now, how does it feel like Brother Jita Ramu is singing? Great are you, Lord. Sister Princess took it up. Great are you, Lord. You know how a daughter like Korolu and I say, Great are you, Lord. Great are... It's a beautiful place to behold. It's a beautiful place to behold. Before you know it, you all are singing. That you even finish that and go to her room. It's still beautiful.
every detail of your marriage is important to God. Many believe that, ah, they believe quietly that marriage is a reality outside of spirituality. It's not true. Please, are we together, Mr. Demola Brow, real fellow of us? Marriage is not a reality outside of spirituality. It's not. A man can only thrive in marriage if he's a spiritual man. Because if you're spiritually minded, when your wife is angry, you will not respond with anger. You will understand, you would be more intentional to know why she is what she is at that moment. You walk in patience with her. And how can you be a spiritual man if all you do is just, you're paying less attention to your own spiritual life. You don't even have fellowship with God as a man. Many women are the one that will wake up their husband up. Daddy, well, let's go to church. And they go like, ah, oh. Some men will still be the one to wake their wife, wake all the people, and then they will, she will still, so, is this how a pastor wife should be behaving? Stupid woman. And they are going to church. So much evil in the church. You often try to separate your conversation away from the spirit. I remember seeing a video of some of the Monsignor youths using every uh, conversation about intimacy <laughs> with the Bible. And I'm like, oh my God, these kids. You can't isolate them. God created it for the pleasure of man. There is a blessedness in sin. Huh. Oh Lord. In, in coming together, there's a blessedness. That, that, that goes beyond what you can imagine if it is rightly done in the spiritual realm of it. Carnality has drowned us so much that we've lost touch with God. We are, we are, we are, we are, we, we are wrapped around by the spirit of, uh, is it Jezebel, Jezebelian spirits, Nicolaitan spirit, all those spirits, spirits, we control the world of lust. A spiritual man can control himself. He only travel when he's around his wife. When he's away, he's, he's, he knows that, no, this thing is only, it's only done. That's why I told Paul, I said that when the Bible says that marriage is what? Marriage is what? With the bed on the file is what? Honorable. It's not your mattress in your room that is honorable. It's not, that's not your bed. No, you have the bed, your body. Your body is the bed. Anywhere the body is, it is honorable. You are not defiling it. That word is everywhere with you. You as a wife, you are living away where your husband is not. You have the bed. You lay on each other. You, like, you are carrying that glory. Honorably living as one that is spiritual. Amen. Submitting one to another. Ephesians 5.22 says that uh, that Malachi let me finish reading it I like it verse 17 says you have wearied the Lord with your words men stop wearing God I beg leave God alone go and do your due diligence stop praying I tell people if somebody come to me now and they I'll say sorry I'm not sister pray I'm not praying I'll not pray I miss there are things we need to do there are lives we have to live. It's a man lifting up holy hands. You know what holy hands means? Ha! Huh. Let's stop wearing God with our words. The last verse says that how have we wearied him? So you have wearied him by saying that all who do evil are good in the Lord's sight. And he is pleased with them. You have worried him by saying, where is the God? Now, I have spoken to general overseer that has churches. The man himself, calling his wife many names. This woman will be crying anytime she's talking to me. Ah, mommy, mommy, stop crying. She'll say, ah, it's okay, I'll be praying for that. I said, that is going to hell. Oh. I, 
told, I said, Daddy is going to hell. And when I had the opportunity to talk to Daddy, I said, How convenient is this for you to swear at your wife, to even stand in front of the altar and tell people not to listen to your wife because she took gifts from other people. You say she's rebellious. She's, you're making mockery, shaming her to the public. I said, I remember I was in the hospital with my little boy when he was sick. That was 2017. I told this man, I said, Daddy, you are going to hell. He used to preach to me. He, three kids they have. The daughter said, I will never take my husband to dad for counseling. Say, because when he's counseling people, he wonders, where is that man in their home? You do not let us be hypocrites. There is a witness in the home, and that is God. He sees all the affairs of man. All that is eating, he sees. And he will judge it rightly. Submitting one to another is the next phase. This one now is to our sisters. And our brothers. But majorly I will be focusing on our mother, sisters. Sister Purpose. Awaiting brother Purpose. Sister Dockers, kindly read Ephesians 5 for us from verse 16. AMPC. Thank you. Ephesians 5 will be starting from 22. Are you there? No, we are not there. Let's open our Bible. We are reading this together. Nobody will be left behind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anna, are you there? Thank you. Are we all there, Sister Augusta? AMPC, please. Uh, you can read another version if you like, but if you don't have AMPC, you can just listen. Yes, Sister Dockers. Ephesians 5.22. You don't have AMPC. It's on the list. Does anyone have it? You have it. You have AMPC. You have AMPC. Please give her the mic, Sister Olamide. I don't want to read this from here because I'll be going slowly. Five. Slowly, it's ma. Something. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we all open to Ephesians 5? Brad Demola, Mystery of Faith. Uh, the girls. Eniola, Princess. Eniolua. Yeah, thank you all. The aspiring sisters. So it's, we start teaching them from now. Amen. So it says, let's go, ma. Wives. Yes, ma. Be subject. Mm -hmm. So we have in bracket, mm -hmm. submissive and adapt yourself. Submissive and adapt. Now, slowly, wives, women in the house, sister Nifemi, be subject. You know what, is, you know what it means to be subject to something? Now, be submissive and adapt. Adapting to something means you found your being in that thing. Read on, man. Your husband. To your own husbands. Yes, ma'am. As a service to the Lord. Please use the mic very well. To your husbands as a service to the Lord. Submitting to your husband is a service that you render to God as a woman. Now, I want us to really come together now as women. Let's put away all the myths, those old our mother's fables that we've known. Now, adapting yourself to that man, loving that man, bringing yourself into his life is a service to who? To the Lord. So, the same way you come to church, you want to come and sing, and you want to do it all that deadly. When you are singing to your husband, you're doing it as to who? Jesus. Can Sister Frances hear me upstairs? I'm yeah, concerned about my God. people there because we want to raise a godly family, godly homes. We are in this together. It's a service. Many women are in the church dying at the feet of the pastors and their terrible wives, witches in their marriages to their husband. They are completely alienated from the man. And I look at them, I say, Kilo, they, why? Hey! What they will not open their mouth to say to pastor? They will say to their own husbands.
It got to a time when I would kneel down on the floor. I would cry. I would say, God, you have to break me. Ah! I cannot live like this. There is a life you have to desire as a woman. This is where you're making. This is where you're being formed. And all these are acts of living in totality to the word of God. Imagine a woman being told by her husband to go in unto a king. Bible recalls that she went, but she prayed. Daughters of who you and I have, Sarah, our mother. We don't, ma. Oh. Hold on, ma. And if you don't submit to that man, you have reversed the cause, the purpose. You're not submitting to your husband. You're not doing any service. Forget whatever you think you are doing in the church. It is useless. Fruitless. Purposeless. Your first ministry as a woman is your home. Proverbs 31 women are women. Bible because her, her husband is known at the gates of the city. You are living a purposeless life. You've reversed that course. It is no longer a service. Like, let the pastor like you above all the women. It is unto your shame. No, God does not recognize you. You are nobody. But your revelation says that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Where are the mothers today? We have their daughters with open, open breasts on internet. Where are you? What are you doing? One of the shameless ones come out and say, hey, they raped my daughter. I said, I made a video to her to, to come. I said, they rape your daughter. Your daughter is raping a boy. They are both children. And you could come out shamelessly. The likes of them, mommy, are there, mommy, bami, lo, ye. I look at the grace of God upon that woman and I say, God, God bless that womb. Do a service unto the Lord by submitting to your husband. If that's the only thing you live to do, heaven is glorified. Because your seeds will go out. You will raise godly children. Read on, ma. For the husband is head of the wife. Yes, ma. As Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. himself the savior of his body. I've heard many people say, a bad head. I cannot submit to a bad head. You call your husband a bad head, he will continue to be a bad head. That's the truth. Words are life, they are alive. You say he's a bad head, it's going to be a bad head. What you want in a man is what you call him. Say, so which head? That head that cannot think. I'm smarter than him. I'm fast. Like me, I'm businessman. He always take money from me. He's useless. He's poor. He's this. Doesn't even if you, even if he has money. Eh, only he's, that one. He's a useless head. And you go to church, and the man will not say, "Hey, and you go and sleep in the church. Look at her. Always in the church." And then they will start cursing themselves. And you have kids around, watching all the war. And the devil is like, the devil is dancing. Triumphing of an institution that is created by God. Amen? Read on, ma. As the church is subject to Christ. As the church is subject to Christ. So let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. In what? In everything to in, their In what, ma? In everything. What does everything mean? Everything. Everything means? Everything. Everything means? Everything. Bank account? Everything. A house in the village or not to the wife or the husband? Everything. Secret conversation with mother-in-law? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> no, because these are the tiny, these are the, these are the little, the little foxes that destroy marriages. I've, like I've had, I've had a lot. <laughs> as young as I am, 
how much marriages the Lord has used me to revive. When I hear stories, I will cry. I will say, hey, men are suffering. A woman, he, I will be asking myself, does she even know her purpose in the life of that man? In everything. I know a woman that will say, if the child does something wrong, I will tell daddy. Hey, mommy, tell daddy. When, when you get to daddy, we will have that conversation again. So they know when mommy knows, daddy knows. <laughs> you can't hide anything from mommy. You. <laughs> I mean from daddy. You. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Are we still excited? Amen. In everything. So you're reading M AMPC, ma? Yes. Read on, ma. Husbands. Love your wives. No, no. That's oh yeah. Thank you, man. Now let's go to first Peter 3 1 to 6. I don't want to go to the men again yet. Men is part one, part two, part three, then men again. Where Manu, are you here? Okay. Praise God. First Peter 3. I love this first Peter. Oh Lord. It's Oh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful scripture. 1 to 6. Are we all together? Read on, my, if you are there. In the same way. In the same way. We'll be discussing now. Please, women, let's wake up. If you are hot, we can put the fan on. I'll manage the fan being on. Go on, ma. In the same way, you wives, mm -hmm. be submissive to your own husbands. Okay, in brackets. Subordinate. You, subordinate yourselves. Not we don't as, know. Not as inferior. Mm -mm. AMPC. Yeah. Subordinate yourself as being secondary, not as inferior to his as being secondary to. Okay. Evil is not inferior. First Peter 3, yes. First Peter Check 3. the mark. This this translation you are reading. Is it, is it amplified? Only amplified. A M P C. There is a C. That's amplified. Are we reading Bible, Sister Docas? Open Ephesians uh, five down for me and stand up. Bele. Yeah, you. <laughs> Ephesians five. No, no, no. We are still reading this one. Let us finish this one. Then we'll come back to you. Okay, ma. Did you find it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so I'll start all over again. Yes. In like manner, mm -hmm. you married women, mm -hmm. be submissive to your own husbands. Be submissive to your own husbands, okay? Subordinate yourselves. Subordinate yourselves. As being secondary to. As being secondary to. And dependent on them. Okay. Dependent on them. On who? Husband. On who? Anna, on who? Husbands, thank you. Yes, ma'am. And adapt, adapt yourself, yourself to yeah. it. Ephesians to talk about adaptation. Are we together? Adapt yourselves to your husbands. I said, as being what? Secondary. Inferior to them. You are not raising yourself above. You are not the to the cause of women. High young lady. High young lady, warrior. When mommy is talking, nobody talks. Daddy said, we'll keep quiet. Sometimes I will see uh, in some of the <laughs> movies, I will see the pastors where I say, even daddy cannot talk where this woman is talking. <laughs> Subordinate yourself. Read on, ma. So that mm -hmm. even if any do not obey the word, do not obey Why the not? word of God, they may be won Why? over, not by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives. Not by what? Discussion. Not by what? Discussion. Give me an example of discussion. Take the mic. Pass, please. We don't have time. The word of God is enough food for us. <laughs> please, let's be fast. We don't have time. Before they will send me, there's no time. This, this teaching is... is I'm conscious too. No, Mike, you have you don't understand the English. Okay, I will explain the English. Um, 
Did you just say you don't understand English? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that even if any do not obey the word of God, so you submit yourself, you adapt yourself, and if there's anyone who do not obey the word of God now, now, they will now be won over, not by discussion, but by godly lives of their wives. So, the discussion in quotes, bring it into practical, what it looks like in a home. How a woman wants to use discussion to win her husband. Say it anyhow. We hear. Uh, Sister Ege, please help us. Let me give her a mic. <laughs> you said they are senior married with me. <laughs> Like complaints, complaints, God reports, bless you. Nagging, nagging, and you may call it discussion. That's actually where I'm going to. <laughs> we call it discussion. Oh, I am talking, you are not listening to me. Kilonso, what are you saying? You're busy nagging, complaining. Yesterday, I called you to pick your call. Where are you? What are you doing? Hey, go, go, go. go. I there was an incident, so I said, the woman even forgot to ask, are you okay? Is there, does anything go wrong where you are? Is everything fine? What's going on with you? It's about, I called you, you don't pick it. Again, we are hungry, we had this. You want to kill him. He will die. Where are you going to? Huh? We are timing you one minute. <laughs> Continue, verse 2, man. Microphone, please. Microphone. Microphone. How come it flew so fast to your side? Please, let's be fast. We, we have it. When they observe the pure and modest way. When they have the pure and modest way. In which you conduct yourselves. In which you conduct yourself as a woman. Together with your reverence. Together with your reverence. For your husband. For your husband. You are to feel for him all that reverence includes. Okay. We are to feel for the man everything that reference includes, which are to respect, to respect, defer to, defer to, refer him, refer him to honor, to honor, yeah, refer him to, to honor, honor, okay. Esteem, esteem, appreciate, appreciate prize, prize, and in the human sense, and in the human sense, to adore, to him. adore him. That is to that admire. To continue, ma. Praise, praise. Be devoted. Be devoted to. to deeply, love. deeply love. And enjoy your. And enjoy your. Life. Now the last one is enjoy, enjoy your husband. Hiya. It, it's like. <laughs> After you've done all these things, what is next to do? Me, enjoy right, Manuel? <laughs> the next thing is for the woman to enjoy you, right? What less, like, like, what's next? What, what next does a man want? You've referenced him, you've trusted him, appreciate him, esteem him, defer him. Ah. You've adored him, you admire him. Some women outside will be the one to tell the man, I ah, uncle your face. And the wife, instead of seeing uncle's face, it's always talking nonsense. Family problem. The man does not receive attention. You don't pay attention to what he's wearing. I know some women, they will be the ones to pick what their husband will wear. They will dress him up and say, you look good, baby. They will call him, check in with him. How are you doing? How is your day going? Lunch? Aha. Uh -huh. When you are now through with all of that packaging him every day, you don't get tired. You don't that's a transaction now. You do all that to get him to marry him. You now marry him and start punishing him. The Lord will not put the Lord. I will not cause, but the Lord will punish us because if we don't do it, it's punishment we are bringing upon ourselves. It's not a cause. You don't you don't do all this. You are punishing yourself because you'll be the one to cry. You'll be the one that will be unhappy. So that means there is a functionality of you that helps the man to love you that you may enjoy him. Are we together? Are we together? 
So when he's not enjoying all that packaging, ha, <laughs> I say, oh, Lua, God. And unfortunately for me, me, I'm a lover girl. So and when I see this, I say, now, nah, Bible is supporting my lifestyle. I'm not doing too much. Hey. Many women don't buy their husband's gifts. It is witchcraft. You just want to collect, 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 collect. Why must you keep collecting? You can't even buy him a shirt. You can't buy him a boxer. You can't buy him a watch. He's telling you, oh, now, nah, now, nah, I, I don't have a lot of shirts. Babe, a lot. <laughs> don't worry. By the time he comes back, you've, you've changed it. There is no woman that would have this package. If that man refused to repent and continue to torture you, continue to make your life, the Lord will remove him. And when we say the Lord will remove him, it's not by separation or divorce. We need to be careful. The spirit controls the physical. No woman abides and lives in the word of God. And the Lord will not rise up to fight their cause. He's a witness in that marriage. He's witnessing every activity is going on in your home. It's not until you come when you see Pastor coming to visit. Daddy welcomes a darling baby. Hey, Pastor is here. Hey, go, 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 go. You're not doing nonsense. Just because there's someone that you respect. Many men wish their wife could treat them the way they treat their pastors. That's terrible. The gift of God to you is what is not crying for you. What God has given you to love, to treasure, to adore is now haunting for your love. Are we okay? Don't come and post any Bible passages on the, on, online or show yourself as the one godly woman when your life is completely void of the life of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Read on, man. But let it be the inward adorning. Inward. No, sorry. Let, let not, not yours be the merely external adorning with elaborate mm -hmm. interweaving mm -hmm. and knotting of the air, mm -hmm. the wearing of jewelry or changes of clothes. But let it be the inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, mm -hmm. which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. Very precious. A gentle. It's an unfading charm. Charm. Bible calls it charm. What is your charm? Gentle and peaceful spirit. I tell you, I say, say to yourself, I am my husband's peace. I am my husband's peace. That is your charm. Your gentleness. So women, as beautiful as they are, the man will see them and he will feel like beating himself over and over for marrying them. With all your adorning, you're still not attractive. Because there is a you that is that is that is irritating. Let me use that word. In your your character is so it's so not it's nauseating in. We have to help ourselves. Bible says iron sharpened iron. You want a loving husband, you have to be a loving wife. There is a responsibility for you as a Christian sister. It doesn't happen by magic, it does not. For it was this that the pious women of old who hoped in God were accustomed to beautify themselves and were submissive to their husbands. A woman must be intentional to submit to her husband. Unwavering. The Lord wants special species to fill the world. A being. Why? Why? Men, even unbelievers will look at your own and they will say, Oh, wow. Now, Ephesians 5 20, message version. Now, this is to the men. Ephesians 5 
I hope our sister divulged enough of this message. Praise God. I hope we really see it. It's not too much. It's just like you're handing yourself over to a man to do what you, he wishes with you. You're giving yourself to him. The Bible says even an unbeliever, even them that do not have the word, we turn to him because of that. It is a charm. When men hear the word, love your wife, it means so many things to them. They believe, uh, yeah, I love her. I'm providing for her. I give her this. I give her that. I... This scripture, I pray, Holy Spirit, really help us. Because we'll be waving it with um, 1 Corinthians 13. Praise God. We can just finish this message and just go home. We don't need to sing closing him, do announcements, no. Because I, I really want us to be fed. To know what the Lord requires of us. As we go out there tomorrow to celebrate Valentine or Wednesday, whatever days it is. Have a rethink of your life. Go back to God and start again. Do it differently. Ephesians 5.25 says, if you're there, wave your hands up. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives. Somebody should read it. because I, So it's not like I'm adding any line to it. Ephesians 5.25. Dockers, please read it. I told you to open Ephesians 5 for me. Message. Ephesians. Mes you don't have message? MSG. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives. I actually want a man to read it. Uh, message version. Mr. Oriofe, kind. you don't have message. Who has Bible have? Brian Manuel. Brian Manuel. Where's your Bible? Okay, please give him the microphone. Mr. Demola, it's okay to stand up. I just want to see your face very well. With the microphone, please. Microphone, please. Uh, Ephesians 5, 25, right? Yes, to Hus 28. Husband. To the last verse, actually, sorry. So we go slowly. Yes, sir. Husband. Husbands. Go all out in your love for your wife. Go all out in your love for your wives. Exactly as Christ did for the church. Now, slowly. We just said women are rendering service to who? To Christ. So that means as a woman is bringing a service to you as a man, you are welcoming it with what? Love that Jesus Christ gave the church. Continue, sir. The love marked by giving. Given. Not getting. Not getting. Slowly, sir. Now, this does not negate the fact that I said that women have to buy gifts for their husbands. So, women, please, let's be careful here. If everybody has a role to play. Let's focus on our assignments. The man now is focusing on his own making. Because why I'm, 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 I'm really emphasizing this thing is that if you find yourself to be married to a daughter of the devil, Jezebel, and they constantly afflict your spirit, and you stick by the word of God, like I said, the Lord will remove them. There are many examples of people that we have seen in real life. There's a way God protects his children. There's a way he... he, 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 he he keeps them. There's a way he protects those that love him and that are ready to do his cause. But you cannot be a bastard child of Jesus and you expect him to protect you. It's not possible. Every unrighteousness, the Bible says what? It is a sin. Go on, read on, sir. Christ's love <laughs> makes the church. Uh, Christ's love makes the church whole. The love of Jesus makes us whole. So your love for your husband, Mr. Amayele, your love for Anna makes her whole, complete, complete, perfect. Continue, sir. His words evoke our beauty. Good. His words. We all know, Mr. Riofe, you are from Ondo State in Nigeria. Hello, sir. Can I see your face? You can tell me 
you've seen men that use words to mold their wife, that evokes the beauty of their wives, and you've seen the reverse of it, the opposite of that too. Sir? Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. We all at some point have come across, but Bible is saying your word. Now, it's like you as a man, as you are, sir, please stand up, sir. As you are now, would you like it if your wife is being rude to you? Would you like it if your wife constantly swear at you? Like yell at you? And Bible says that you're one with her, right? Both of you have you've come together, you're now one. So, how come you are now doing what you don't want her to do to you? You're doing it to her. Do we understand the, the sentence? Now, the word you are speaking to this woman, it's going to make her beautiful. How do words make us beautiful? Bible says, let your words be seasoned with grace. You're speaking life as a man, a spiritual being, a priest. You are intentional about the words. You are not careless with words. I, I have heard many careless words. One of the ones I said, I'm living this marriage, it's a careless word. You are not careless with words. Some women at the office, they would, they would remember what their husband says to them. And they just smile. They will just smile. Happy. In fact, as they are happy, they are praying for him. The words revokes our beauty. Read on, sir. Everything it does. Everything it does. And says. It, and says it's designated. It's designed. designed. Sorry, designed to bring the best oh, out of her. Everything Mr. Mayele says everything Brian Emmanuel does is designed set to bring the best. So which means the best of your wife is not yet seen. People don't even know how wonderful she is. She can be anything silly. Jesus Christ loved us while we were yet sinning. We were nothing. Lost, forgotten like we were not. Who, who knows us? He found us. He nurtured us. He speaks life to us. He brings hope out of our hopelessness. He brings life from our deadness. That is who your wife is. And that's what you have to make out of her. You bring, your word is designed to bring the best. People are telling you, Oh, your wife is such a nasty woman. No, no, no. My wife is not nasty. She's a daughter of Zion. We just have to learn to be patient with ourselves. You have at it. You are intentional about things you do. Everything you do, everything you say, is designed to bring up. I pray in the name of Jesus, we will not fail God in our marriages in Jesus' name. Read on, sir. Dressing her in dazzling white silk. Are you there, okay. sir? Yeah, designed to bring the best out of her. Mm -hmm. Dressing her in dazzling white silk. Mm -hmm. Radiant with holiness. Radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. Yes. They are really doing themselves a favor. They are really doing themselves a favor. Since they are already one in marriage. Do we understand the illustration I did with Brother Olofe now? They are already one in marriage. So you're helping yourself. We just said to a woman now, when you had done him, you love him, you nurture him, you will enjoy him. So you are doing yourself too. <laughs> you both are doing yourself a favor. What a beautiful union to, be, to behold. Show me a Christian home. A woman ready to live like that. And a man ready. And that's a devil. Who is devil? Do you even need to pray? Let's be honest. Do we need to pray and bind the devil over like what? Your life alone is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And that's the devil will bring the power of you. Bring, you bring the spirit of unity to divide. You now major on, major on things that are not even supposed to be seen or made, talked about. You major on it. and You now be putting energy in what? In vanity. In vague conversations. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. We don't, sir. Welcome, ma. No one abuses his own body. No one abuses his own body. Does he? No. Does he? Let's answer the question. Is there anyone that abuses his own body? No. He feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us. Did they? The church. Stand up. Thank you. 
Continue, sir. Since we are part of his body. Hold right? on, sir. He said, you treat and pampers your body. The woman is your body. And you don't abuse your own body. You understand? You treat it and you pampers that body. He treats and pampers it. Continue, sir. And this is why a man lives, uh, lives his father, father and mother, mother and, and cherishes his wife. And so hold on, sir. Father, mother, cherishes his wife. There's nothing like my mom said she doesn't like you. You go back and tell mom, mom, my wife is me. She is me. You don't like my wife, you don't like me. If your mom is hating your wife, she's hating you. If your sisters are rude to your wife, they are rude to you. And the same thing, the woman, it is wrong for your family members to meddle in your marital affair. Completely wrong. It is wrong for you to take what you did, what your wife hurts you. The next person you call is your brother. Say what? No, don't do that. It's wrong. You are giving them the license to come and afflict yourself. Because when you both are done loving each other, they are still there hating her for what you've settled. Let's be careful. The power of oneness binds the home together. We cry together. We win together. We lose together. We rejoice together. That's a home. That's a godly home. You are interested in her well-being. She's interested in your well-being. You're hungry, I'm hungry. You're eating, I'm eating. From all of this, we can see selfishness is not part of the language, right? There's nothing like my thing. I heard, oh, they said, your money is, your, is our money. My money is my money. Language from the pits of hell. Says who? You want to spend his money? You, which money? Whatever he has is yours. Whatever you have is his. It's one. One, one. Inseparable. I pray that the Lord will help us to make amends when necessary in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Um, that's for our main. Love surpasses spiritual gifts. That's what we're focusing on here. Imagine a man. Uh, who is reading for me? We can read any version here. But I would prefer NLT. NLT, KJV. I'll do KJV from here. Praise God. First Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13 from 1. NLT, please. Do you have NLT? Mama, are you reading NLT? Please, if you have NLT, please kindly take the mic for me. Oh Lord, my time. Please, 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 let's read. I don't want to break this message. I just want to finish it. First Corinthians 13. Yes, ma'am. NLT. NLT. Yes. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I will only be a, no a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. To all our brothers in the church, this is not a message for home believers. You are a brother loved by everyone. You have that spiritual gift. Bible says, though I speak with what? With the tongues of men and of angels. It's not like you are not speaking it now. It's not the tongues of devil. Lo. Are we together? Children, are you listening? Is it, is, it, is it the tongue of the devil? You are like what? I am become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. Read it, man. What, what are you? I will only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. <laughs> A noise maker. And that's what that Jesus told them. He said, take your noise away from me. I don't want that. I don't want to hear it. When you don't love your wife. This part is big because we have many in the church who do not love, practice love to their wives and they are on the altar. They are on the altar. Read on, ma. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. Is that clear? Three. You will be nothing. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about it. 
Imagine a man that could move mountain. If we all announce, if there's a, 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 an announcement today now in Surrey that there is a man who is so gifted and who could move mountain, the whole world will say, Jesus has come. They'll say, now we have Elijah of our time as is here. He said he has all knowledge. He understood all mysteries. <laughs> like revealing all mysteries. You prophesied your word here is, but then you don't have love. Bible says you are nothing. Nothing. You do not, you mean nothing. <laughs> yes, ma, read on ma. If I gave everything I have to the poor mm -hmm. and even sacrificed my body, mm -hmm. I could boast about <laughs> it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Are we together? Giving. You give everything to the poor. You could even burn yourself. Oh. E excuse me. Hello. It's saying that you could you are ready to die. Now, what else is love if not to die? So that means you can die without loving. Like I can decide to die for sister I did it without loving her. I mean, how mysterious. I pray that God will help us. Love is. Verse says, love is patient and kind. It's not jealous or boastful or proud. Love is patient. It's kind. Many men are not patient with their wives. They are not kind. Kindness cannot be bought. When you are a man that is constantly broken, you see that woman in you. What makes you happy will make her happy. So if she's sad, you are sad. You'll be kind to her. Tell me a man that will be kind to a woman that is yelling at him. Huh? Mr. Heavens, how does it feel when your wife is yelling and swearing and shouting? You know, experience that in Jesus' name. And if you have experienced it, it die today in the name of Jesus. How does it feel? You haven't experienced it. Imagine it. Like your response. Can you imagine being kind to such a woman? No. But that's what the Bible is telling us. It's patient and kind. Under no circumstance. In every time, it's patient and kind. Your marriage is a place of breaking and putting to test the fruit of the Spirit. Let's take note. Marriage is a place of breaking and putting to test every fruit of the Spirit. It's like you're going out of your way and still being kind while you are suffering. Like you're doing everything. You know you're suffering. This woman is not doing, she's not doing all her obligation as stated in that First Peter 3. But then, nevertheless, you want to fulfill the lost love of Christ because Jesus Christ was in pain for us. He died. But yet, it's, it's a deep, deep depth of love. You're not getting it back. But then you keep loving her. That's how it is. That's how to love. Many people will use the scripture to punish their wives when they are not happy with her. They will use scriptures to punish her. Like we've explained it now. What we've explained is what they will hold on to. To go and fight the woman. That's not the spirit of God. Love doesn't think evil. Whatever you think comes to play. Call her a stupid woman. She'll continue to be stupid. Five years from now, you will see times 10 of stupidity manifesting in her. Because the word you speak, don't forget every word you speak evokes something. If it's not beauty, we evoke demon. Are we together? It will always evoke something. The time is so fast spent. I just want to summarize this whole message. We started quite late though. You don't think evil. Your thought pattern needs to be checked as a man. Your thoughts shapes your actions. What you think about her is how you will behave to her. Are we together? Is how you will behave to your wife. Whatever you're thinking about her is how you will treat her. 
It shapes your actions. You don't suspect her. Stop. Why are you suspecting her? Why? Men will say nasty things to their wife. Hey, you not have men that is not calling you and toasting you, Abby. Ha, why? If she says she's tired, believe it. Just Jesus Christ loves the church. We should love in words. I mean, in deeds, not in word. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And always remember, Jesus Christ gave everything. He gave his time, his glory, his position, everything he gave. Without holding anything back. He gave it all for us. So you have to give your wife everything. You minister love to her. You lead her in love. Are we together? Your life is ministering, constantly ministering love to her. Whatever you give your wife will come back to you regardless. Anything you give that woman is coming back to you. You give her hate, you get hate. So I pray that the Lord will help us. It's a, it's a deep mystery in the kingdom of God. And we need to understand that the home is a representative of God's life and ways here on earth. Let's bow down our head for prayer. Father, we can only ask but to cry for your help. Come and help us. Come and help us. A man that would give himself completely to the wife is the greatest thing we desire that want to give us Jesus on earth a woman that is rendering her service to her husband as to Jesus surrendering all holding nothing back this is the true hallmark of love this is the true love that you've predestined for man Father I ask that this grace of love, this life of love, rest powerfully upon your children in the name of Jesus Christ. We leave this auditorium today, Lord, in newness of life and power, in love in Jesus' name. We no longer profess love, but we live love. We no longer just say the word love, but we are pragmatic. Father, help us to be children of you, daughters of you, sons of you. In our ways of life, in our marriages, as we prepare to behold and to be beholding in marriages. Lord, help us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I pray for myself that as this word has come forth, Father, I will also be a partaker of his grace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba, Father, for in Jesus' name I pray.